Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers. I'm broke millionaires. We've all heard those stories about celebrities and sports stars who get multi-million dollar deals, then years later end up with nothing to show for it. It's the same with some lottery jackpot winners. So how does this happen? While your odds of winning the lottery jackpot are pretty slim, the chances are much higher that if you do get lucky, you could end up losing it. The odds are better if you start your own business, but still risky. The Bureau of Labor Statistics says after five years, about half of new businesses will fail. Entrepreneur J. Alexander Martin co-founded the iconic hip-hop fashion brand FUBU, as well as other business ventures. Martin says focus is key. My advice on, on anyone that is thinking of trying to start something is to stay in your own lane. Everyone has ability to, to do something. Some people can't be entrepreneurs, some can, but everyone has their own vision on what they want to do and how they want to do it. Martin says he learned the lesson that it's rags to riches and rags again if your mentality is about the facade and not a solid financial future. I knew I had, I had to get, re, get regain my, uh, my healthy attitude towards money because, again, I was a victim of wanting to market. I was a victim of wanting to show. I was a victim of just wanting to be something that, that I saw on television or I saw uh, within my peers. Entrepreneur and music executive Johnny Marines says people get fooled by the designer clothes, jewelry, hot cars, and lavish lifestyles on social media and in music videos. He says they try to buy into it at any cost, not realizing that some of it is borrowed for the filming and not bought and owned. A lot of it is just for show. The glitz and glamour is not real. The glitz and glamour doesn't really exist. And that's why when they start chasing the glitz and glamour with the money they get, a lot of times they end up broke. Financial expert Mark C. Smith, who appears on Fox Business as an analyst, says instead of hoping for a windfall, build a solid foundation with your work, whether it's a profession or a trade. One step you can take is get as much education as possible because most jobs that pay the most, you have to, ha you have to be educated. Um, two is find a passion. So if you have a passion for fixing cars, or if you have a passion for being an entrepreneur, find a business that's gonna be a business that's gonna make you the most with that passion. Getting money is one thing, keeping it is another. Let's find out what our panel has to say. Joining me for this conversation, Johnny Marines. He's a music executive and entrepreneur. Johnny, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Thank you so much. Also with us is Jay Alexander Martin. He's a co-founder of FUBU and the For Us By Us Network. He's also an author. Jay, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. Also with us is Mark C. Smith. He's a Senior Vice President for Wealth Management at Wells Fargo Advisors. Mark, thank you so much for being with us. Hey, thanks for having me, Lisa. We, re we really appreciate it. Um, Jay, I want to start with you on this because you, you wrote a couple of books about this. Money makes me crazy. Why yeah. do you think we end up seeing people lose pretty much everything they work so hard for, you know, to get? Well, it, it kind of goes back to the saying or the, the, the lyrics of uh, Kanye, uh, wait till I get my money right. You know, a lot of times with when people grow up, they grow up in certain societies and certain situations and they always want to prove themselves or show what they have. And I guess, you know, it's almost like the show me state. Even with me, you know, I had I had situations, I had situations where I overspent and I'm over over overzealous with my money, and I had to sit back and say, "Hey, listen, what am I doing?" Um, and look into a perspective from from a, a perspective of, do I want to be rich or do I want to be wealthy? No, we're gonna do, we're gonna explain the have you explain the difference to us a little bit later on in the show. Johnny Marines, you work with a lot of artists, some of the biggest artists in the entertainment, particularly the Latin music um, capacity. What do you see happening with some of these artists? Because we see them doing these tours, all this money, these lavish lifestyles. And then, you know, five, 10 years down the road, they have very little to, uh, to show for it. I mean, from my experience, what I've seen a lot of times is that the art, you know, a lot of times artists, athletes, uh, you know, they come from other underserved neighborhoods and they don't necessarily have the best financial advice. They don't have the best people around them. So when they come across and they hit stardom and they come across these large sums of money, 
they don't make the best business decisions. And not, not only that, like Jay said, there's also some sort of validation that they're looking for. And what does that mean? You got to get the chains with the diamonds. You got to get the expensive car because you got to show out. And, you know, when you come from nothing, this is what represents success, especially in the neighborhoods where they come from. So it's almost like you have to continue spending the money to show that you've arrived. Well, spend it foolishly a lot of times, uh, yeah. not really uh, understanding that the money can run out. And a lot of times they get put in bad predicaments and situations where they're overspending their money on things that they shouldn't be. And one of the things that they should be is hitting guys like Mark up and invest in their money. Because if you invest your money, a lot of times all those things that you want to buy to show out with whether it's jewelry and cars and houses, whatever, a lot of times if you make the right investment, that investment itself will pay for those things. And, and down the road and, and help you build your wealth. Mark, in, ter in terms of what you see happening, because you, you help people at various stages of their careers and also you know to build for the future when they're just starting to make that big money and then also down the road why do we see people that have a lot of money end up with end up with nothing how is that possible like the average person would go like how is that possible they had a multi-million dollar contract and now now they they can't even afford a house or a place to live at least i think johnny was spot on with everything he just said um i've seen it happen time and time and again and it really is a difference between old money and new money let me explain the difference new money does exactly what johnny just uh, talked about show out they want to prove to the hood that they made it they want to prove to the to the to their girls that they made it Some, you know they want to prove to their boys that they made it and so they're what are they going to do they're going to go to the club and drop a hundred thousand dollars that live in miami they're going to go down to marquee and drop fifty thousand dollars for a birthday for a birthday bash for their girl all of this stuff is is for one reason it is really to show is to make up for the fact that you came from a situation everyone always dreamed and hoped that this is what they would do and how they would party when they did it and, and unfortunately we all grew up watching you know diddy you know with yachts and boats with it and that's what you did when you had money and so that permeates our community and that's why you see new money act like that old money they've been there before they acted like they saw this type of money before and when they and when it's in their account and it's passed on no one changes their lifestyle due to having more zeros in their bank account if you look at elon musk okay uh warren buffett elon musk sold all his homes and now he rents he says he doesn't want to own one more house um you look at uh, warren buffett he owns the same house that he owned 40 years ago driving the same car i mean this guy's worth you know 30 plus billion dollars right. so it's all money and new money and so I think the mentality has to change. I think you you started to see this a little bit in hip hop. You had Jay Z come out with an album where he talked about generational wealth, and he talked about how he felt dumb walking through Dumbo because he didn't pick up a a building that he could have bought and flipped it for five x five years later. I mean, this is something in a hip hop song you never heard this before. Before it was just lavish and this, but you're starting to hear some of our you know some of the titans of hip hop really address the fact that we as a people are looking at money in a, in, a, in the wrong way. We've seen these stories, you know, people that have very humble positions and they end up, you know, passing away and leaving hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to their local church or to some other, you know, to a charity or, or something like that. Johnny, but in, in terms of the hard work ethic, because people feel like, okay, I work hard. There's also that sense of, you know, I'm working really hard. I'm making a lot of money. Finally, I deserve to treat myself. How do you, how do you counter that? Or how dangerous is that? Is that? No, I agree. I think everyone should treat themselves. It's just a, a matter of how much. You know, I, I could I could speak from experience. You know, I come from the Jacob Reese projects in the Low East Side, and when I first came across success in the music industry as a manager, and I came across a large sums of money, I, I spent a lot of it foolishly. I was one of those guys that went out and bought a lot of things I didn't need because I wanted validation. I wanted people to say, "Oh, look at him." You know, later on, I have started to understand that all these things I was spending my money on really had no value, you know, and it's like you go and do try to sell it and you're only going to get back a fraction of it. So, I mean, I speak from experience myself where I, I definitely went down the wrong path in the beginning. I'm fortunate enough to have continued to be successful where I've been able to turn that around. And that's why now today I'm a serial investor in a lot of the different uh, businesses that I, I own. And then Jay, in terms of the in terms of the mindset, when you first go from not having, you talk about you know growing up but not having a lot to then 
all of a sudden you start to go like, wow, I can afford that. I can afford that. I can afford that. I can afford that. Tell us about some of the, the mental changes you went through. Well, I mean, for me, I always say, you know, faith it till you make it. Or, and there's a balance between faith it and fake it till you make it. When you're faking it, you're doing whatever you got to do to make it look good. When you're faking it, you're believing in the fact that, look, whatever's happening is happening for a reason. So that's that's what I do. And then as one of the principles I always say, to, now I say to myself, after I've lost so much, I said, listen, I can't spend $3. I can't spend a dollar unless I make $3. So again, it does come back to disciplines. But again, I know I still have a work in progress because I still go out there and I still do what I got to do. And I still, you know, uh, want to have fun. And I still want to show because, again, that's marketing. And we're in the entertainment business. So we can't be fooled by the fact that we have to sit around and we, you know, and look a certain way. Now, I have the luxury of owning my own clothing brand. So <laughs> right. I, don't have, I don't have to worry too much about the clothing. Um, but again, that's the luck. That's the luck of the draw. That's what I chose. So what I try to do is create businesses so I could always have a, 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 a stream of income that will always kind of keep going and going and going and going and going instead of collecting, you know, stuff per se. And what, and what Jay made a valid point, creating streams of income, making sure you have more than one. Because if you only rely on one, if you're a rapper, if you're an athlete and, and you don't invest your money and that's the only way that you have an income coming in, you know, as an athlete, you could easily get hurt, cut off a team, as a rapper, you might have your last hit or an artist, period, can right. have the last hit. That's why we have so many one hit wonders. But I, you know, wanted, I, mean, I just wanted to do a cautionary tale. I know many of people who have gone bankrupt chasing multiple streams of income, because when you chase multiple streams of income, you're going into places that you do not know. And you have no business being in sometimes because of educational hurdles that you may have or because of experience hurdles that you may have. So I, I would say that if you're going to go chase this other stream of income, make sure it doesn't take uh, you to, poor, to the poor house. I know a client who opened a restaurant and dropped six million dollars. Formal NFL player, uh, well publicized. Six million dollars on a rest uh, on a restaurant in LA, it, and it has a value of zero today because it went out of business. I don't know one stock in the S and P 500 that goes to zero. So that's why a lot of us are saying that sometimes going and investing in a company rather than in a business may be something that's more suited for you if you don't have the acumen to be in a restaurant tour to own a bar or to if, if that's not um, your specialty a... if that's not exactly. your specialty oh, yeah yeah well, again that's what i took that's what i say about money all the time and that's what money makes me crazy and building the empire is all about it's all about finding about who you are and what you can do and, and not looking at what everybody else is doing because again i could tell you i could we could all be sitting here talking about what it is but you know Johnny, what, what, about, what about that in terms of like, how, how do you make moves? Like, how did you give, give us, a, give us a sense, you know, give us a little bit about your, your journey, like how you, you know, when you started managing these acts and they're doing really well and things are really popping, give us a, give us a sense of your, of your, your progress on that journey. Yeah. I mean, uh, organically, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur more than I ever wanted to be in the music industry. The music industry kind of gave me the ability to become an entrepreneur. Um, the way that I invest in business, because like Mark mentioned before, when you do invest in several businesses, you're not going to be an expert at every, everything that you invest your money in. You really got to do your due diligence and really understand who you're going in business with and how knowledgeable they are in that field. Now, that, with that going to come a big level of trust. Um, trust doesn't always work, but you got to be able to trust the people you're in business with because it's impossible for you to be everywhere at one time. You know, so for me, I, for me, it's just big when I vet the individuals that I'm going in business with. A lot of times I know these individuals for a long time. They're proven entrepreneurs that have done very well in their fields. And that makes me comfortable knowing that I have a long term relationship with them. And so far, everything's been great for me. You know, I, maybe by the next episode, it, I won't have the same story and Mark will be right. But for right now, everything has worked very well. Just me vetting the people, making sure that they are the right people to go in business with. No, definitely. And you have to know that it can't just be somebody with a name, a bank account, and an idea, right? It's gotta be, it's gotta be more to it. Jay, what you're laughing, you're laughing about that. What about what about the, you know, people say, well, if you really love it and you really have the passion for it, you can make it work. Well, I mean, listen, it, that's part of the plan. You know, you, 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 I love it. And, and you never work a day in your life. If you love your business, man, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I've been in business 30 years and I don't love it all, 
you know, right. but I'm happy with what I'm doing. I like the field that I'm in because that's what I always wanted to do. But then again, you know, now I, I, I kind of br uh, branched off into other things and I like that too, but everything I do is an extension of what I liked, you know, and I think that's the way it kind of works, you know, and that's the way you kind of get into businesses that, that work for you, um, according to, you know, me. I don't know about anybody else. You know, I take if I have a if I have a hat business, then I know you need a T-shirt to go with it. So it's automatically going to feed into each other. You know, so that's just what I think about. I, and again, with social media and the and the 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 brazen, excuse my French, BS that comes out of a lot of people's mouths. Right. You know, you don't know who to trust again. And I got to go back to that. You have to kind of go back and do your own research. And I'm always a stickler for research and understanding what's going on and what's not, not what's not right and what's not right, what's good and what's bad and what's good for me. And, it, and that's what I do. And Mark, in, ter in terms of what's good for the individual, it's like so people get the other thing too people have problems with is if when they get a lump sum check, like for whatever reason, it can be a settlement, it can be a, you know, a tax refund, it can be, you know, dur during COVID, the, the extra money, everybody went out all of a sudden you know, to, to eat and, and all, there was a spending surge when people were getting the, you know, the assistance. But like, if you get a, th like take a thousand dollars, how do you break that down? Like a certain percentage for taxes, then like, how do you break that down in your, in your math mentality? Yeah, well, listen, with a lump sum amount of money, that is the hardest amount of money to manage, okay? Because it, you don't know when you're gonna get that lump sum again, and sometimes you never get it again. Uh, right. So for any NFL players, NBA players, MLB players, anyone in the professional sports specifically, this is a, a, applicable to because you're in your early 20s, you get a check for $5 million, and you think you're going to live like a millionaire for the rest of your life. That check, unfortunately, may be the last time you see that $5 million or a check like that for the rest of your life. So it's so important to know that are you in that category of somebody who would never see this amount of money ever again? Because if you're in that category, you have to treat that money like it is the last uh, check you're ever going to have. And, you, and you're, if you're 20 years old, it has to last 50 years. So I always tell my players, divide how old you, uh, how long you want to live, let's be 70, 80 years old. If you're 20, if a $5 million check comes down, you only could live on about 100 grand a year, okay? 100 grand a year. And so it sounds like a lot. Jay, I just wanted to ask you too, because you know we have a lot, we have a lot of people in our community in our in our audience too. You you've created such an iconic brand and done just so, so much trailblazing in your in your field and in your career in so many ways. So I want to thank you for that. And but also, can you just share a little bit of wisdom? Because you know, there's a lot of people that have a similar dream, even if it starts out with like I'm printing T-shirts or I'm doing this or I have some design ideas or whatever. What advice What advice would you have? Uh, for them because this, and especially at the time you did it it was so it, it was so tremendously groundbreaking and inspiring to so many people what would you tell them i mean i'm a vision oriented guy so i i think of something i create a vision i i work hard and i work hard and i work hard and i do it till i i can't do it anymore um and when i can't do it anymore is when i'm asleep and when i wake up i'm back to work again so i'm very focused stay focused on what you're trying to do stay disciplined and as far as financially keep your head on the swivel definitely and johnny what, what advice because you know we have a lot of aspiring artists too and uh yeah. our artist managers but in, in terms of the artists even if they're just starting out and not making that much money but they're getting you know a couple thousand here and there for a show or a little little uh you know showcase or, or something like that what advice do you have for them the advice i would give an artist so that they could actually make it much further in their career versus so they don't we're not talking about just a couple of thousand dollars is to be original be original because nobody wants a copy where they could still be the original a lot of times the artists make mistakes they come in trying to sound like another artist that's hot at the moment or trying to do the same style. And a lot of times that backfires because people don't want copies while they can still get originals. So you have to have, you know, originality. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers. I'm Broke Millionaires.